I was actually gonna say that that was a clove pitch. That's that's what my guess was when I saw that. I can appreciate how long it takes to tie a knot. And also, like I said in the last video, his voice is amazing. I love his accent. It's just great to listen to. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. It is time for another video today. Before we get into today's video though, there's two things I want to talk about. The first thing is my voice. It sounds really different because I've been sick all week. So I have no idea how that's gonna sound for you guys. Uh, I just know for me, it sounds really weird. Uh, and then two, also I want to take a moment to point out that my background has changed. This beautiful blank wall. The sewing machine is no longer my background. Uh, the reason why I switched it uh, is because I thought it was time to get a little bit more professional for you guys. Uh, and since I don't sew and it's my wife's hobby, I thought that it's time not to have it always in my background. Don't worry guys, it's still here. It's just across the room. All I did was flip my desk around to have this beautiful blank wall as a canvas. Hopefully here soon though, I will have some art or some kind of something besides just this blank wall. Um, anyway guys, with that being said, today's video we're gonna do is uh, another Fred Dibna uh, laddering the chimney part one today. You guys really enjoyed when I did the other Fred Dibna. I really enjoyed it. Fred was a great guy. Uh, I've loved reading all the comments off that video. Definitely make sure to go check it out if you're new and haven't seen it. Uh, with that being said, before we watch the video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Definitely make sure you subscribe because as I said in my live stream and as, uh, and as I've said in the community post, uh, when we hit 50,000, 50K, I'm going to be buying one of you guys a plane ticket to the USA. For you guys to come anywhere in the USA you guys want, I will be buying you guys a plane ticket. So definitely make sure that you subscribe. And with that being said, let's get right into this video. Mm. Well, basically this is sort of a packing that keeps the ladder off the wall of the chimney so there's room for your boots to go through, you know, on the rungs of the ladder. There's two schools of thought in this. One that, the, you know, tying them on with string is time consuming and all that, which it is. But the thing is, when it's when it's being pulled up the side of the chimney, um, you know, by my mate here, it, it, and it bangs against something, it only busts the string, you know. Like the other school of thought is have a metal construction that's bolted, bolted to the ladder, which when that hits an iron band or something like that, it busts the bloody ladder, you see. String is cheaper than brand new ladders. So, but it does take a bit of time for tie them all on. <laughs> That's the only problem. Now it's going to be just underneath the third rung, so there's room for your boots. If you tie it on there, it's amazing how it gets in way. Um, you know, it's in the wrong shop because there's no room for your for your feet. I like how um, how much he thinks everything through. Like even just the difference between using the wood or as opposed to bolting something on. And a lot of you guys have pointed out like how, how smart he, he was and that he was I think pretty much like an engineer. I think you guys have said like he's extremely smart, uh, very creative uh, with a like inventive mind. Um, so it's really nice to see that. And also, yeah, it, as when I, I was a Boy Scout and I, 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 I did tie a lot of knots. They can actually be fun. Some of them are really cool, but it, uh, some of them are very time consuming and laborious. So I haven't tied as many as he had, obviously, but I can appreciate how long it takes to tie a knot. Yeah, basically that piece of wood is, is just to put there to all the ladder off the wall. Here we are drilling the first hole in, in you know, which is, is the, there is an hole actually there that's just been pointed up. So knocking the first dog, which will be the, the hole fast at the, at the base of the first ladder, as you might say. Then goes the plug wood, which as you can see, it doesn't go in very far, you know, but it's quite far enough, you know, it's quite safe. Um, and that's what's termed as a dog. Uh, then I'm going to knock in, in now, uh, knock in, in now. And the next stage is to the piece of rope, it's called a lashing, and it's a piece of rope about five foot long with a loop spliced on one end, as you can see. Um, the next stage is to prop up a ladder and climb up it as though you were going up hmm. to clean the bedroom window. And then about five feet from the top of that ladder, you drill another hole, but in our case, the hole's already there. You drill another hole as plumb and straight above the one below as you can get it. Um, and insert another piece of plug wood and another dog.
As you get a bit higher up, the holes have a tendency to get a bit deeper. I think it's called fear. <laughs> <laughs> Here you see the first ladder is, is in position and I'm about to tie it onto the bottom dog or the bottom all fast um, which uh, you know that's where the beer belly comes in handy um, <laughs> it's sort of round right. the hook, round the side of the cheek of the ladder under the rung, round the hook, round the other cheek of the ladder, round the rung and then back round the, the, the rung below and a clovich I was actually going to say that that was a club pitch. That's that's what my guess was where I saw that. And that's got it fast. It will not come off. And the thing to do also is use as much of the rope up as you can because in a gale, the ends start to blow about and, and the whipping comes off the end of the rope and then you've got one with like a cat of nine tails end on it, you know, blowing about in the wind. That is the pulley wheel to pull up the next ladder. Here yeah, the next operation is to tie the the ladder to the top dog or the top old fast that you've just knocked in without tying it to the haulage rope, you know, because you sometimes if you're not paying attention or you're trying to talk to somebody who's mithering you on the floor, they you end up lapping it round. You see how easy it would be to lap it round the haulage rope. Yeah, that's it. That is now, the bottom ladder is now firmly fixed and as good as it'll ever be. It's just, it's really interesting to watch this because you can tell that he not only has the experience, obviously, of doing this for so long, but he's thought everything out. Like, he has the, his rope cut exactly how he wants it. You know, he's driven the dog in the exact right depth that he knows. Like, he's like a, he's like a machine almost. He knows exactly uh, what to do, when to do it. And, and the fact that he came up with it all on, on, on his own, just his ingenuity and just his experience of doing this is just really interesting to watch. And also, like I said in the last video, his voice is amazing. I love his accent. It's just great to listen to. To the wall of the chimney. And the next operation is to climb up to the top of that ladder and sit to stride the top iron rung and reach up as far as you can and drill another hole in the brickwork which of course it's very easy for me here because having done this thing about seven times before <laughs> and used exactly the same holes every time I know exactly how far I'm reaching and where I'm going and it's quite an easy operation to keep the walled stack of ladders in a, in a, in a very straight line. If you're putting them up and you wander towards one side. Okay, so he does have a tool belt on because I was wondering, I was like, why doesn't he have a tool belt on? Like, where's he putting everything? I thought he was just sticking stuff in his coat, but it's nice to see that he has a tool belt. I'll back this up just a little bit. If you're putting them up and you wander towards one side, when you're putting the staging up at the top and you've got one ladder that's maybe two foot gone a bit sideways, and say the other one's gone the other way, it looks rather an erratic effort at the top, you know, everything's out of line and out of square. Now we've drilled the, the hole approximately five feet above the top of the bottom ladder and hooked on the pulley wheel. Now this is where the tricky bit comes in. The second ladder is tied on approximately nine rungs from the top, which is about midway. And of course, when it when it's being pulled up by the labourer or the man down below, we, we lose more or less half a ladder uh, of a lap, which uh, you'll see the reason for this shortly. The thing is, as that ladder comes up, or the second ladder comes up, on the bottom rung of it, there are two lashings, one of which I'm using now to tie the bottom rung to the nearest corresponding rung of the ladder that's stuck to the wall. I've got the other lashing round my neck, and the two steeplejack hooks which have come up with it are stuck in my belt. Um, 
No, uh, that's a secondary sort of safety precaution, the one with just a clovitch round the side, just in case the, 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 that hook there that I've got my hand on, or the one that the pull is on, if that happened to come out, I'd still be in with a chance, you know, the, the, the ladder would still be connected with two hooks to the bottom one. As you can see, it's slightly precarious there, how it shakes about, but once you've lashed it to that top hook, which is five foot above the bottom ladder, you've only got about six rungs above that are standing in free space, or what you might call unconnected to the chimney. It is now possible to unhook the pulley wheel and carry it up the back side of the ladder and hook it on the top iron rung while you use one of the dogs that's stuck in your belt uh, to, you know, get another purchase five foot higher up still, you see. And once you've drilled that hole and put the dog in, you can lift up the pulley wheel onto the dog, which of course one end of the rope is still attached to the ladder that you, you were sat on. And then you'll see in a minute where the when I come down and untie that ladder, my man at the bottom pulls and up goes the wall 21 pins of the ladder onto the top of the bottom ladder, which sounds unbelievably complicated, but it is quite a simple operation, really. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, like, with his overlapping the ladder, like, five feet as well, and then put, where he ties the dog in, it not only... It, is also like tying in the bottom ladder, I'm pretty sure, making like the top of the bottom ladder stronger because not only is it tied in with both ladders, but it's also tied in with that dog that's five feet up above the uh, lower ladder. It's just, it's really, it, it really is. I really do enjoy watch, watching how much thought he puts into it. And he says it's such a simple thing. And yeah, you would think like, pff, you're just throwing ladders up on against a chimney or, you know, whatever. It's, it's simple, but like just all the thought into it. Like, I don't know if I was just, told to do this task and I hadn't like watched his video or knew something about it. yeah I have no idea what I would um, do I, I mean I, I would probably have to think about it for a long time before just um, doing something like this in fact it's so simple you can do on a good chimney on a good day where it isn't windy and you don't manage to thump the hell out your hand with the hammer like you know I mean if you miss with the hammer it's rather painful um, there goes the pulley wheel, down the ladder, um, untie the lashing at the top that's holding the top of the ladder. Now it all comes loose and flops about in the wind. It's the dodgy bit when it's very windy and you're three quarters of the way up and the wind's trying to snap the ladder off sideways. Uh, it's quite exciting. Um, <laughs> And there's the secondary lashing on the side, and then finally the one at the bottom. Uh, when you've released it at the bottom, it's at the mercy of the man on the floor and the wind. Sometimes it's rather awkward when it's very windy and and the and the ladders start twisting round the rope, you know, that's pulling the thing up. Okay, so he takes that bottom ladder off that was just a temporary thing but still yeah it's just it, it's great to see uh him work honestly but yeah i just i just love all the thought he put his put into it and uh all the safety he's taken it does look really sketchy though like with the ladder just like because i've been on i've been on several ladders i've never been on them like straight up and down what he's doing you know, i've never been on a ladder where it's like on a satellite tower or something uh most of the lives you know since i do work in construction most of the lives are like slanted pretty good and we dig them or we shove the feet pretty far under the ground and if we're really worried about it then we uh put like a piece of rebar or something in so it doesn't kick out but there's really nothing against the house there's really nothing to keep the wind from just throwing the ladder over um thankfully i've never had a ladder kick out on me i've been on some like which again nothing compared to him i've been on some ladders like 30 feet tall though uh when you get up to the top it gets pretty it feels pretty sketchy even though it is a strong sturdy ladder Anyway, sorry about all that. Um, I just really enjoy Fred Dimna. Uh, I love his voice and uh, just watching him work and just seeing all the creativity that he does um, and all the ingenuity, ingenuity that he uses with what he's doing. So I really do appreciate everyone who has recommended this to me. I will be doing part two at some later point. I just didn't want to have a super, super long video. Uh, that is why I only did part one today. But 
Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys made it this far, I really do appreciate you guys. To help out with the channel, please make sure that you like. If you like this content, uh, then please share with your friends. And other than that, uh, feel free to message me on Instagram uh, to give me a shout uh, if you want me to react to something or just want to talk to me, let me know. And then also make sure you comment because that really helps out and I enjoy reading your comments. And with that being said, uh, that is it. And I will see, catch you guys all in part two later on. Thank you guys so much.